The spread of reading and writing. The greening of Arabia's deserts. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a bold prediction about the future state of Arabia. He said, The hour will not begin until the land of the Arabs once again become meadows and rivers. This narration anticipated the greening of Arabia's extensive dry desert environment. As recently as 1986, there was little to no farming in the region. However, over the last 30 years, these deserts have been transformed to grow grains, fruits, and vegetables, thanks to techniques such as center pivot irrigation. This is a process that pumps water to the surface from deep underground reserves, some of which date back to the last ice age 20,000 years ago. Now put yourself in the position of a person living in 7th century Arabia. This region hosts some of the most extensive sand and gravel deserts in the world, with very little rainfall. Could anyone inhabiting such a harsh environment ever rationally conceive of the possibility that one day there would be a plentiful supply of water and abundant crops? This prophecy also makes a claim about the ancient past. Note the words of Muhammad, the lands of the Arabs once again become meadows and rivers. By saying once again, he is implying that at one stage in their history, the deserts were lush with vegetation and life, and that they will be returning to this former state. Geologists now know that the Arabian Peninsula was, indeed, once filled with meadows and rivers in ancient times. Modern archaeological discoveries have uncovered a number of fossils and conclude that once upon a time, the Arabian Peninsula was much greener and wetter, just as Muhammad had revealed. The Rapid Spread of Islam and the Decline of the Muslims Muhammad, peace be upon him, predicted that the Islamic civilization would reach both east and west. He said, God folded the earth for me, and I saw its east and west and the dominion of my nation will reach as far as the earth was folded for me. History bears witness to the fact that Islam spread rapidly, both east and west, just as Muhammad boldly had foretold. At the time, this was a geographic expansion the likes of which the world had never witnessed. The Islamic empire was the largest the world had ever seen. The Prophet Muhammad not only informed us about the spectacular rise of the Muslims, he also foretold their decline. He said, The nations will call each other and set upon you, just as diners set upon food. Someone then asked, Will it be because of our small number that day? The Prophet Muhammad replied, Rather, on that day you will be many, but you will be like foam, like the foam on the river. Here we can see that Muhammad prophesied the dire circumstances in which the Muslims would find themselves. He explained that a day would come in which the Muslims would be large in number, but in such a state of weakness that other nations would invite one another to set upon them. The analogy of Muslims being eaten as a meal was given, which emphasizes just how helpless they would become. This prediction accurately describes the radical turn of events that took place in the Muslim world in the 19th and 20th century. Prior to this, the Muslim lands had grown to become some of the most powerful in the world. From the time of the death of Muhammad until the 19th century, the Muslims were economically, politically, militarily, and technologically far ahead of most of the world. Then the unthinkable happened. Nearly all the Muslim world was occupied, colonized, and militarily defeated by non-Muslim nations. Russia had annexed the Caucasus. France controlled Algeria, Morocco, and Tunisia. Great Britain occupied Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Palestine, and India. And the Dutch controlled Malaysia and Indonesia. Of the 50 Muslim countries that exist today, only a few survived occupation, and the ones that did were still subject to colonial masters. All of this is just as the Prophet Muhammad had predicted. At the time, there was an estimated 200 million Muslims, representing 12.5% of the world's population. But their considerable numbers could do nothing to prevent the defeat by their rivals. They were weak like the foam on a river. Again just as Muhammad had foretold. If we reflect on this prediction, it is quite counterintuitive. If this prediction was guesswork, then it would have made more sense to state that the Muslims would be diminished in number and that would be the cause of their weakness. Yet Muhammad predicted the exact opposite. 
a paradoxical situation of the Muslims being vast in number but very weak. And it came true. Historically speaking, when religions lose their influence on the world stage in such a way, it is usually followed by a stagnation or decline in the number of their followers. Yet Muhammad foretold the exact opposite with regards to the religion of Islam. He said that it would continue to grow in terms of the number of followers, to the extent that it would eventually enter every household. He said, This matter will certainly reach every place touched by night and day. God will not leave a house or residence, except that God will cause this religion to enter it. Today we are witnessing this prophecy unfold before our very eyes. Islam is currently the fastest growing religion in the world, with nearly one in four people on earth being a Muslim, and is forecasted to be the world's largest religion by the year 2070. This is despite Islam being constantly attacked by the media, the colonization of Muslim lands, and the many wars that have been waged in the Muslim world. Even the name Muhammad has prophetic implications. It's an Arabic word that means the praised one. The Quran states how Muhammad's remembrance will be raised. We elevated your mention for you. Since this verse was revealed over 1400 years ago, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been the most praised person in history. Today, not a second goes by without a minaret somewhere in the world publicly proclaiming the time for prayer and saying, I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of God. Moreover, the name Muhammad is consistently the most popular name given to newborns across the globe. This is despite the fact that Muhammad never encouraged Muslims to adopt his name. In fact, he said that the best names are Abdullah and Abdurrahman. Now we've analyzed a number of the Prophet Muhammad's prophecies, which were made over 1400 years ago, and have seen how he has accurately foretold many things. Purely from the standpoint of basic probability, for someone to accurately guess about such future events, which spanned across multiple nations in different time periods, many of which were outside the sphere of Muslim influence, to give so many predictions without making a single mistake is utterly impossible. Today, millions of people believe in false prophets and follow false systems for guidance in life. As human beings, we're willing to follow false prophets, man-made systems, and baseless superstitions, but why don't we accept the real guidance when it comes from God? God empowered the Prophet Muhammad with accurate prophecies as a way for us to distinguish the true prophets from the false. Truth has now arrived, and falsehood perished, for falsehood is, by its nature, bound to perish. This video is based on the book, The Forbidden Prophecies. To learn more about the evidences for Muhammad's prophethood, please download your free copy of the book at the link below. I really enjoyed uh, watching these prophecies. One that fascinated me most, and I don't think it's new to me, I think I've seen it somewhere, is the fact that they'll turn the desert from being a desert to something being green. I mean, that's amazing. Ask yourselves if they can do it, we can do it too. Imagine you're living on a land that can easily grow stuff. What are you waiting for? Do you have to be taught? Sometimes you have to copy these good things that other countries are doing. Let that be um, something that you focus on to get inspiration from. And just that, I mean, it's just amazing. Otherwise, all these prefaces were quite amazing. Let me know what you guys actually think about them. If there's any of them that you would love to discuss. Otherwise, um, Muhammad himself as a prophet has brought all these prophecies to you and taught the word of god and um delivered it the way he best 
the way he could best do it and it's really up to you to believe that all these things these prophecies will come to be or they've come to be and just believe in whatever other message he came with uh, let me know what you think otherwise i really get excited when i'm reacting to a video about muhammad and i just love him and what he stands for let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video